That's it. Good. He carries it with him all the time. That's, That's right. it. Sure it is. Amen. His cup runneth over. <laughs> Amen. That's cool. I hope you uh, hope had a great week this week. It's good to see you all here. Uh, we're going to continue our series on a matter of time, time to keep. Uh, we've been talking about our Bible and what it does for us. Um, like I said, this one, this one's going to be the one that takes a little bit to get through. But that's all right. We'll just go ahead and take our time with it and learn what God wants us to learn. We talked uh, last week about how. Um, the Bible shows us our heart's condition uh, and how it illuminates, uh, illuminates and it shows us different things uh, in, within us and uh, how it's, it's important. It is an important tool that we need, uh, not just that we want, that we need in our lives as Christians uh, to be able to, uh, you know, follow what God says, to see what God says, to to take it in and absorb it, that you can observe it, you know, because you can't observe something you don't know, which is why a lot of people, a lot of Christians have trouble in their Christian life because they haven't pulled enough absorb, the absorbing of the Word of God into them to make it come out. So you put out what you put in. So that's what we need to do. We need to make sure we're soaking up the Bible and, and giving that out. And, and it's kind of like that. Uh, but we need our Bible so very much. Uh, we went through a time to get, time to lose. We're on a time to keep. So we got to keep our Bible. It's been entrusted to us. And I thank God He gave us a book with every word in it that we're supposed to read. I thank Him for that. And you should too. Because now we have what God wants. We have the thoughts of God. We have, uh, you know, everything we need. May not be everything we seemingly want to know. Maybe, you know, the, they, what, they didn't say nothing about the dinosaurs. It didn't say, well, I'm just, just be glad they're not still walking around. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, I had a dream last night that I was being chased by a T-Rex. <laughs> I don't know why he must have been. But every time I looked around, and they say when you dream something like after you that, uh, that, that it means that you feel like somebody's like at, like somebody is after you and your dreams trying to manifest that and like, I, I need my dreams to get me away from feeling like that. I don't want my dreams to reflect what I've already been feeling, you know, whatever. It was a time to run, bro. Yeah, it was. Like, I would hide. It was so funny. Like, I would hide, and I would like to, because you know what? It, it always happens. You know, you're, you're going to try to peek to find out where your adversary is. And there was always that dead eye look right at me, like he knew exactly where I was at. So I spent my night running from a T-Rex, and uh, but yeah, yeah, some, some like that. But isn't that funny? Sometimes we have the craziest dreams, but sometimes they're so awesome too. I've had some just real great ones. Uh, I've dreamed of singing with the cathedrals. Uh, it's always informal setting though. It's like uh, one time I remember dreaming that we got to. I was at a restaurant in the cathedral bus pulled up and uh and then i and i am like oh it's you guys you know i'm like and, 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 i love you and all this stuff and your music and everything like that and then we ended up having a big old big old uh jam session i remember roger bennett going to the bus and getting off his the, the keyboard and we just we just had us a big old concert right there uh in that diner which was pretty awesome dream i love dreams like that i'll take them any day of the week Far better than a T Rex, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, but uh, but anyway, we we need our Bible. We need it so much, and uh, I want to talk about a few things uh, this morning that the Lord's laid on my heart regarding this. Um, how we need our Bible, what it does for us. I want to talk first of all about how it admonishes us in truth. 
Uh, word admonish means to caution, advise, counsel against something, to reprove or scold, especially in a mild and good will manner. Uh, and it says the teacher admonished him about excessive noise. It's to urge, to a duty, to remind, to admonish them about their obligations. That's what admonishes does. And that's what the, 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 the truth of the Bible will admonish us. It will tell us. So it always does it. And God always does that in love. Even, uh, even when you see the harshest of, uh, of things in the Bible, it's still out of a, to, done in love. Um, and we're going we're gonna to get to, uh, I'm going to tie that back in here in just a little bit with the next one. But um, um, with, it encourages us with hope. And I want to tie that in here uh, in just a few moments. But we are to, you know, that's one thing we, we should really regard in the Bible is that it admonishes us in these things. It, it tells us these things. We get caution. We, get it, we are advised. The Bible cautions us about things. It advises us things. Uh, it urges us to duty. It reminds us. It reproves us and scolds us too over sin and bad and, and, and things that are in our lives. So we, we can find that there's a lot just in the word uh, admonish that, that is connected directly to the Bible. Um, in, in what we hear, what we see, what we read, what we uh, what we take in uh, is all wonderful things uh, from the Word of God that we need in our lives. So in Psalm chapter 51, verse 6, the Bible says, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So, we are admonished in the Bible about the truth that's found in the Bible. Because you will not find truth associated with anything more than the Bible. Because the Bible is truth. Because it is the Word. And the Word, which we know is Jesus Christ, is what He was referred to in heaven. The Word became flesh. He is the truth. The Word is the truth. The way, the truth, and the life. It's all three of those things. So, you can't separate the Word of God that we have from Jesus because He is the Word. He brought, God, he brought God's Word, made God's Word manifested unto us. And see, you, you thought that He just brought the gift of salvation. He didn't just bring that. He brought many other gifts with Him. Uh, we, we can, that'll preach right there. Amen. He didn't just bring the gift of salvation. He brought a lot of other gifts to mankind. The Word of God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And now we have in our hands, we have the words of God that have been brought and made manifest here. And uh, it, it, it's such a wonderful gift of God. Your Bible is a wonderful gift of God. That we might know all these things. That we can see the plan that God's got for our life. That we can see how we should live. How we should pray. How we should act. What we should do. What we shouldn't do. Don't you love the fact that God did more than just say, don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't do that. We got our don'ts, but we also have our do's. This is what you do. Don't do this, do this. Don't put on this, put on that. We're, we're given the, the, those spectrums. Don't go that way, go this way. Think about the directional changes that you always see compared in, in the Bible, uh, putting one against the other. Don't go that way, including the roads uh, that leads to destruction and the straight gate that goes in a straight and narrow way. you got two different roads. Don't go that way. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Right? So don't go the broad way. Go the straight way. So there's a lot that we have there, but it's in truth. 
Psalm 91, uh, 4, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And we can rest in the truth. Truth does a lot. When you're in the truth, that's when you can have peace. That's when you can have the tranquility. That's when you can have soundness in your mind and the storm settle down. And that's how you can have uh, feel like you're safe and you're secured and you're all of these things because you're resting in truth. We don't rest in lies. We don't rest in the word of man. We don't rest in any other thing, but that only we rest in the truth of the word of God. And that is what brings the peace, the joy, the happiness, the hope. All of those things are born out of uh, truth birthed out a lot of things for us. And, 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 and they're all great things. They're all wonderful things. Things that we ought to have. Uh, so that's what we that's what we got to understand is when you're looking at uh, the Word of God, you are looking at the truth. And so that's 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 something that should make us be joyful. In Psalm 100, verse five, for the Lord is good; His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. There's another there's another mention of the truth, meaning the word of God, it's the truth. It, it's an enduring forever. Okay? It's not going to fade away, it's not going to pass away. The truth will endure forever. You know, there is one solid line of truth. Anything below it is a lie. Anything above it is wrong as well. Alright? You can't add. Don't try to add to the truth. There's just truth. That's all there is. That is the line. Truth is that line. And we, you, when you come short or you go over, either way you've missed truth. You've missed it. Not only can you come short of the truth, you can go over and, and pass the truth as well. So we got to shoot and hit that, that, that truth. And that's why we use the Bible as the center of everything. Now mankind is, God's given man a good mind, given them a sense, and a lot of people have uh, been able to do commentaries and, and make things kind of jump out at you and there's some good things in there but not everything they say can really be linked as just solid truth sometimes those uh, when they expound they go a little bit farther than what they actually what the truth is actually stating so we have to be careful about that and just leave it at the scripture because that is the hundred percent line of truth for the believer, for everyone, and for the non-believer. It doesn't matter if they believe it or not. This is still the truth. You can accept the truth or you can deny the truth, but it doesn't change the truth. Amen. It doesn't change it one, one inch because, because you, you don't believe it or you don't think or you question it. It doesn't matter. That just means you're not accepting the truth. And we do that all the time. Uh, with what things in our lives, sometimes we just de want to deny the, deny the truth of the whole fact. But sometimes when we face the truth, and we're always told to just, just look truth right in the eye and face the truth, and that's what it is. You know, don't be in denial about it, just face the fact. This is the truth, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, or whether you give a regard to it or not. The truth is here. It's up to us what we're going to do with it. Just like everything else is a choice. You can choose to do right. You can choose to do wrong. The truth is there. You can either choose to believe it or choose to not believe it. But it doesn't change it if you don't. It doesn't mean you're not accountable to a holy God. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be, you know, you're, you're not going to have serious consequences by not obeying the truth. It's there whether you think it is or not. So we have to remind ourselves about that. 
And, and we need to come to the realization that outside of the Bible, outside of Jesus Christ, there is no truth. He is the truth. That's not part of the truth. That's all of it. He is the whole 100% truth. The concentrated truth. And out of that truth, we get many things. Because you'll find many truths that have come from the Bible. There's many things. It's all true. So everything you hear in the Bible, that's true. You just, just got to believe that it is. Because if, that's where you're going to get the peace from it. Amen. Peace doesn't come by not believing that the Bible is true. You'll never have peace if you don't believe the Bible's true. Mm -hmm. You'll never have that comfort. You'll never have that <coughs> peace of mind that passes all understanding. We need to believe that this is the truth. That's where we're going to get the benefit. It, you could call it the benefit of the Bible. The benefit of believing the Bible is many wonderful things are, are brought forth in your life that help you that help me, that rest us in truth, because it is true. How can you how can you be shaky about believing something that's true? You know, the part of our problem is that there's so much, there's so much fakeness, there's so much things that are maybe even a little partial truth mixed with a whole bunch of garbage and nonsense and lies. And we have trouble in sometimes deciphering amongst ourselves what, if someone's really being truthful if they're not. Mm -hmm. You have to weigh what's being done. You have to judge these things and try to discern if what they are saying is actually true. Uh, but just because somebody says it doesn't necessarily make it true. The Bible is true. If, if I stand and I deny that the Bible is true in any form or fashion... That does not make that book not true. Let God be true then if every man found a liar. God is truth. His word is truth. It all comes from that. And that's what, that's what we need to understand. But His mercy, His truth, endureth to all generations. Ecclesiastes 12.10 The preacher sought to find out acceptable words... And that which was written was upright, even the words of truth. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 7, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? You know what? Sometimes it's not somebody else that hinders us from obeying the truth. Sometimes it's us. We hinder ourselves. Most of the time it's us. Amen. You know, we like to say, oh, that old devil. No, the old devil is in the mirror. <laughs> you want to see him look in the mirror because he's the, that's the worst devil you're fighting right now. Amen. That's why he doesn't have to fight us so, as hard as he could. He's doing, he's doing a mighty, mighty work. And he's trying. But you know what? The longer people resist the truth... Instead of resisting the devil, they want to resist the truth. They do a lot of resisting against God and what God says and what God wants. They resist that. They want to fight it in their life because they want to do what they want to do. Think about that. If we spent more time resisting the devil and, the, and, and evil and sin as we did God's Word... We'd be in a whole lot better shape, folks. A whole lot better shape. <laughs> oh, it's so hard for me to resist this. The, the, you know, the, 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 it's so hard for me to resist sin and re resist all these things that I want to do. And I know God says that I shouldn't do it, but you know, it's not that hard for you to say, "Oh, I, I, I don't want this in my life more than I want what God wants in my life." There you have it. That's where it is. Your energy is being spent in the wrong place. Instead of fighting what God wants to put into your, into your life for that positive change to make you more like Him, fight the things that He says to fight. 
Flee from the things he says to flee from. Obey the voice of the Lord. It's a simple message. God said it, do it. It's simple. There's no problem if you're obedient. <clears throat> that's, that, that's the thing we all need to get, even as small kids. You try to teach your kids, if you're doing right, there's no punishment. You're not going to get in trouble for doing right. Just simply obey and you're good. There would never have to be that. I think just about every disciplinary action that I've ever taken against any of my children, I brought that up. You know what? If you're doing right, then this would never happen. This would never happen if you would just do right. But if you don't do right, that has to happen to correct the problem. That's why we have to correct. It's a correctionary thing. It's not a being a, a, a big old meanie. It's not just because you like to do it. I hate it. I hate doing that. I hate having to chastise my children over things. It, it bothers me. Now, I've said it before. I used to think my, my dad was nuts when he told me that it hurt him more than it hurt me. I'm like, oh, really? That's interesting logic right there. I'm the one on the receiving end. But it was not until I became a father myself. And I had to, I had to be on his end. Of the giving end of that chastisement. That I realized how bad that stinks. Because you want your kids to be good. These, these are your kids. You know, this is this is the, their little mini yous, and you know, and, and, and they're all this, and, and 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 you want all these great things for them, and want them to do good. You want to see all this stuff, and then oh, yeah, really? Now I gotta go there. But you know what? You have to do it. You have to do it. The Bible says if you don't, you hate your child. That is the Bible. That is the truth. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute as well, about another verse that will go with that uh, in just a few moments. But <clears throat> who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Ephesians 6.14, the Bible said, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the blessed breastplate of righteousness. It, it admonishes us in the truth. And therefore, it leads us to the next thing. It encourages us with hope. Often you'll find the word exhort, which means to encourage. That's what it means. Uh, in Job chapter 11, verse 18, the Bible says, And thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee, and shalt take thy rest in safety. Hey, you got to understand, you're going to be secure because there is hope. There is hope. If anything, if one message we can we can try to encourage one another with is this: that there is hope. When you think there is no hope, all is lost for you. That's how people lose their mind. That's how people lose their lives. That's how people think that there's no, there's no hope of ever having this right. Well, you know what? With God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. And you can do all things through Him that gives you the strength to do it. Okay? So we can see that we can be encouraging and be encouraged with hope. Thou shalt be secure because there is hope. All right, you can you can dig about yourself and take your rest in safety. That is why we can lay our heads down at night and sleep, even if you have crazy dreams like I did. <laughs> I still slept, which is awesome. Uh, and, and you know that 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 is another gift from God: rest when our bodies are tired. 
It helps your body to recoup itself and heal itself. All of those things. Rest is very important. You need to get rest. Half the time I think we get sick because we just don't take time to rest and we just get our get ourselves all keep go, 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 and you just get your resistances down, and the next thing you know, there you go. Praise the Lord. Pass the queen at you. You're there. Right? So we need our rest. You can rest in safety because there's hope. There is hope to the hopeless. Psalm 31, 23. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Hey, you know what? There's an encouragement in that verse. It says, be of good courage. Be of good courage, and he'll strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. That's where our hope needs to be. If your hope's in anything else, you're, you're going to fall terribly short of having rest and courage in your heart. If you're resting your hope in your finances, if you're resting your hope in somebody else other than Christ, you're going to be let down. You're going to find out that you should have not put your trust there and your hope there. Men, men can fail. God never fails. Every time. God always is there. He always has a way to encourage you. Always has a way to lift you. Always has a way to keep you from being sucked down into the pits of where we should never even dwell. It should never even be named. A depression should never even be named among Christians. It should never be. Because what do you've got to be depressed about when you serve an all-powerful, all-knowing God who has a plan already in place? We act like we don't have a God half the time. The way we act, the way we live. That's not the case, folks. There's peace. There's hope. There's safety. There's rest. There's security. There's all these things. It's the knowledge that the truth is there. And you're in it. If you abide, if any man abide in me and my word abide in him, right? You ask whatsoever you will in my name and it will be given you. You know what? We need the word of God in us. We need it. We need to absorb that. Get it in us. Abiding in him. And here's the, uh, here's the verse I wanted to share that's going to tie up uh, that first, that first uh, thing it says here in Proverbs chapter nineteen, <clears throat> verse eighteen: Chasten thy son while there is hope, and let not thy soul spare for his crying. Did you catch that? It said, "Chasten thy son when while there is hope. Do it while there's while, while there's hope." For them to be changed. When there's hope for them to be corrected. When there's hope for them to be turned from the way that they're going. When there's still hope, it's not too late. They have, they're not totally set in their way. They're not totally set in rejecting the truth. They're not totally set against what you're trying to correct them in. Correct them. Chasten them while there is hope. And do not let not thy soul spare... For his crying. That is a powerful verse of scripture for the raising of children. Mm -hmm. Most people don't want to hear their kids cry. That's why they don't want to discipline their children. But I, I got news for you. Spare not for their crying. Don't say, oh, they're going to cry if I get after them. Well, you know what? Don't Don't spare. Spare not for their crying. Because that is part of the sorrowfulness. That is part of associating disobedience with pain. Because guess what, folks? When you get to be an adult and you get disobedience, you're going to have pain. That's all there is to it. Even in the secular world, disobedience 
things at work, you're going to be feeling the write-up. You're going to be feeling the pain. You're, you know, depending on the nature of it, you may feel yourself out of a job. Right. Disobedience equals pain. That is the lesson we need. We need it young so we get it in our minds so that when we get older, we still have that in us. That disobedience means pain. Don't spare for the crying. Don't spare it. Lamentations, verse three, verse 20, uh, chapter 3, verse 21 through 23. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. 1 Peter 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 through 3 Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are, or now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Okay? There's hope. It's encouraging us in hope. Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. We're the sons of God. That's why the world doesn't know you. Because you have canceled your birth certificate to the world and you've transferred it to a whole other one. Amen. You literally are not of this world. You're in it. When you're born in the world, you're of the world. <clears throat> the world loves its own. You notice they all, they all love the little kids? Because they know what they are. They know what they are. They know what they want them to be. But when they stop loving is when their birth certificate changes to a new world. And now they become something they have no knowledge of. And what do people do when they don't have a knowledge of something or they don't understand it? They attack it because it's different. It's not the norm. It's not something they understand. They don't know. Therefore, they tear at it. They seek to devour it and dissect it apart so they can try to understand it for some reason or just, or just kill it off and get it out of there so they don't even have to think about the way that it confounds their mind. When we, get our, when we get saved and we're born again, as the Bible says, we are now transferring our whole everything over to a whole new world and the world don't know you anymore because it didn't know him. And look what they did. Well, he let them do it, but look what they did. Look how they treated him. They didn't kill him. He gave his life. Mm -hmm. He laid it down. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't even catch him if he didn't want them to. There's scripture that said they went to lay hold on him, and he walked right through him in the middle of him. Went right out the right out the back. You know, and it's, <laughs> they couldn't catch him unless he wanted them to, because his hour had not come yet. But in that fullness time, that time, then yep, here he is. And then he didn't run from it. He didn't even try to get away. Why? Because he was there acknowledging that this is my hour, this is the time that I must be caught. And, and, and it's, it's so awesome when we see the things of the Lord like that. Titus chapter 2, verse 13 through 15, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Colossians 1.5 For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before the word of the truth of the gospel. 
Listen, that is awesome. The hope which is laid up in you uh, is laid up for you in heaven, where have you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel? The gospel is the word of truth. That's where we have. And you'll notice that the gospel was the one message in the Bible that was given expressly by the Lord, saying that it is the power of God unto salvation. That gospel message will always carry with it the power of the living God. Amen. If God put his stamp of approval, this message of the gospel will always have my power. Always. You know, the scary thing is, is that some of those other messages may not have the power of God on them. Depending on if, depending on if the person that's preaching or teaching is, is right with God. God honors His Word. There's truth in His Word. He can use that Word. But the, where we find the real power that goes beyond human capabilities is the power of the gospel, of the, the Word of God. The gospel always carries the power of God with it. It's the power of God unto salvation. So, I hope you can see that the Bible admonishes us in truth. And it, it, it gives us hope. It shares with us hope. It encourages us with that hope. And that we, can, that we can rest in those things. God doesn't want us burdened down with those things. God wants us to know we have hope. He wants us to have peace and joy and all those great things. That's what the Lord wants for you. Don't you want it? Well, how bad do you want it? If you really want peace, if you really want joy, if you really want those good things that God wants you to have. If you really want those things, then you're going to stop resisting what God wants to do in you and start resisting the devil and the things that are keeping you from having. You know what? The sin is robbing you of all of that stuff that God has for you. It does. It robs you of it. So before you start saying, oh, I like to do this and this is something I like to do and uh, you know, I know God's not necessarily for it, but it's just something that I like to do. Think about what is being robbed from you because you've chosen to place that there instead of the perfect gifts and perfect gifts of God in your life. Think about it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the word of God and the truth that we have tonight. Thank you for each and every one who's here, Lord. We ask that you bless your word, Lord, that you bless it to our hearts. <clears throat> Father, that we would just surrender those things to you today. That would help us to be found, Lord, in solid truth. Found, Lord, in peace and harmony and tranquility in our lives. Even in the midst of storms, in the midst of hardships. We can still have hope. We can still have peace because we rest it in the truth that you have in your word. I pray you bless it now. And bless it to our hearts and our lives. Bless the service to come, Lord. Be with it. Put your power upon it, Lord. And the singing and the preaching especially. God, help us to see. Open our eyes that we might see. Open our, our hearts that we might receive and our understanding that we may not have that seed sown in our hearts snatched away. Bless us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.